Am I live? All right, looks like I'm recording. Hi guys, welcome to my house. It's nice to see you as you join. I see some kids are already ready with their pencils and their markers. It's very exciting. Um, I want anybody who would like to join in to join in. This is not just for my students, this is for grown-ups. I think art is a great way to relieve stress, so I'm gonna do this as much as possible. While I get used to this whole setup though, it might be a couple of days before I can do it again, okay? So today, what we're gonna be working on, we're starting simple. You're welcome, parents. I thought about doing something with like, I don't know, oil pastels, paint, vinegar, things like that. And we're gonna get there because pencils and Sharpie and crayons, it's just, it's just so clean. And if you've ever been in art class with me, my students know this, I just, getting pain and ruining shirts that's just like in my DNA. So this is going to be like the one and only time where our project is going to just stay contained on the surface that we're working on. So I apologize to you in advance for future lessons that we're going to be doing. Okay? So what we're going to do today, we're going to create this super cute little monster. But he's holding a secret. Bah, he's actually got a giant mouth. These are called big mouth cartoons, and I've done this before. I did this with a, my fifth graders, I think, last year, and they thought it was super fun. We had some really good times boomeranging and trying to think of like different things to draw. Um, so it's really versatile and it's customizable. I figured that we would just start with a monster because it's really simple. You can make shapes and colors as complicated or as simplified as you want. It's just a little good warm-up lesson, I think. These are fun. I've drawn a few getting ready for today. So I hope that you are ready. I hope that you've got your hands warmed up and ready to go. But your hands should not be near your face. Get them away. You're not supposed to be touching your face right now. Okay? All right. Now, excuse me while I adjust my webcam to face down to my paper because you're not actually going to be watching my face the whole time because then you won't see me drawing the artwork. You're going to be watching my hands and hearing my voice. But since my camera is like taped to a lamp and on top of a stack of junk, it's going to take me a second to get it pointing down, okay? This is the first time that I've done this, if you can't tell. Had online art class. All right, so here we go. I'm going to turn this this way and get this all ready. All right, so that looks pretty good. You guys can see. Let me remove this piece of paper that my daughter Maggie drew on earlier. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, yeah, you can. She is not quite two years old, and that is her masterpiece. So we're going to put that to the side. You guys are going to. Hi, guys. Yay. I see you, too. It's good to see you. All right, so. What you should have in front of you for today's art project. You need a pencil. You need a Sharpie, optional. Really, you just need a pencil and a paper, but if you wanna kinda dress it up and make it look all like cool and fun and gradiated and colored in like this guy right here, then you need a Sharpie and some crayons, okay? And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to blend crayon colors. I get a lot of questions about that, about how I make my colors look so like ombre and pretty. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that. So before we start with this, this is a really simple project, but because it's so simple, there's like one essential step that you got to get right, or it's really easy to kind of mess it up. We're going to start by folding. I'm going to fold it in the simplest way I know how. You're gonna first face your picture like this, portrait. It's gonna be up and down, vertical. I say portrait. You're going to take it, take the bottom, and fold it in half. For lack of a better term, I'm just going to, well, there are better terms, but my students don't respond to them, so I always just say hamburger or hot dog. This is hamburger, so you're gonna fold your paper hamburger style, and then you're gonna take the top fold, so I want you to take the top fold and fold it down to the middle crease that you just created. Okay? So that if I turn my paper now to the side, it kind of makes like this letter um, Z, like a backward Z. Okay? But I'm not going to work with mine like this. You can work with it, the flat being down here on the bottom. I'm going to flip mine actually so that when I'm done drawing and I'm ready to start opening up the flat part, I can do that. Okay? Now, there are a few different ways 
that you can do your sketch. I've seen people who draw the entire drawing flat and then they start doing their folding, but because we need the outside drawing, the thing here to be kind of like a trick, you're almost doing two drawings in one right now. So you need this image to work right here. And if you draw the whole thing to start with, you're not going to be totally sure if stuff lines up correctly, unless we took rulers and measured. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to start here and we're just going to kind of eyeball. I'll put my little monster creature right here maybe so that you can kind of keep an eye. And I'm going to draw mostly the same. And you can customize. I've got stripes on the horns and polka dots and stuff. I might change it up. But here's what we're going to do. All right. So to start, you're just going to draw the monster's body. And if you want to do something like horns or furry feet or whatever, make sure that you leave space for that, okay? You don't want to draw it completely to the edges because if you do, uh-oh, you guys can't see my pencil line. Let me draw a little bit harder. If you do draw completely to the edge of your paper, then you won't have space for that, okay? So I'm gonna draw, but I'm gonna leave space for some squishy little feet down at the bottom, okay? So now that I've got my basic circle done, let me see if I turn it off, if that helps. It does. Um, I'm going to draw my feet. I'm going to draw claw feet this time. Here I drew these like weird little duck feet. So I'm going to draw some claw feet just to start. All this stuff, this doesn't matter what I do here because this is not part of the crease. We have to make sure that his mouth or her mouth is on the crease so that it will give the illusion like they don't have a bigger mouth underneath, okay? Because here, this is a complete image, and then when it's opened up, that's also a complete image, okay? So, going to draw, let's see. Maybe I don't, I'm going to draw different horns. I'm going to draw curly Q horns like this. It looks like a mustache. And I'm making mine symmetrical, but you really don't need to make yours symmetrical. On these front parts, like here and down here, you can do whatever you want. You can give, I'm actually going to do three eyes. <laughs> and I might give mine a nose. So to do eyes, all I'm going to do, a little oval. I'm going to leave a circle inside, kind of mark it off that I'm not going to color um, in and leave white. Because students, children, tell your parents why we leave tiny white circles in the eyes of the things that we draw our cartoons. This is very strange not hearing answers. But yes, it's because we want it to look like there's some light reflecting out of the eye and it makes it look a little bit more realistic, a little shinier, and a little bit more alive. Tiny details like that are what's going to make a difference in your artwork. So um, I really like stripes, so I'm going to do some stripes on my horn too. And right now, you can be following me, or you can be doing your own thing. If you want to make your monster look like they're really furry or something, you're totally welcome to, okay? As far as the mouth goes, whenever you're done with little details, I'm actually going to save the polka dots for um, after I draw the inside of the mouth in the, the bigger paper. So for the mouth here, I made, first of all, I made like this uh, soft rectangle that kind of goes right across, right in the center where that crease is. Now, I'm gonna make him look like, I want him to actually have lips that I can color in, so I'm gonna draw a smaller soft rectangle inside of the one that I just made. And then I'm gonna make some really light teeth lines. This is just a marker for me so that I can see where I need to put those fangs once I open him up. So. I've got my little teeth lines marked off, like so. And now I'm ready to open this guy up and start. Let's see, are we all good? I see many, many comments. Guys, hi. All right, so sweet. Jonah says, hello, hello. Hi, hi. Oh my goodness. Okay, can you guys hear me? Can, pe can people hear me? Check my mute button on the side. Adriana, hi, Miss Fell. Guys, can you hear me? I have a couple people telling me you can't hear me. Oh, wow. So many, so many people are here. This is very exciting. 
Okay, sweet. All right, good. So I've got my monster. I've got the front of him drawn when he's like kind of closed up, zipped up right now from um, the first part. Now what we're going to do, we're going to open our monster up. You're going to open up your page and we're going to finish the surprise part of your cartoon monster. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I now have a built-in kind of cheat sheet where I just have to draw a line from here to here, from here to here, and then I'm just going to finish his lips. And all I'm going to do is just start going from these teeth lines that I made and make fangs because everything you do in here now is all hidden inside of here. So it, we can kind of mix this all up. I could draw a giant corn on the cob right here if I wanted to. I could do anything I wanted right here because this is the surprise area. But for now, I'm just going to show you how I got this done. Um, if you want to customize, if you want to draw him chewing on a boiled crawfish, oh, I could use some of those right now. If you want to draw him eating something or, I don't know, biting his brother or, I don't know, being bad or whatever, you can draw that because it's not going to mess up the first drawing that you see when it's folded. So I'm just drawing different kind of teeth. And I always do this, even though I know I did this right, I'm going to fold it closed really quick and make sure that I didn't accidentally like draw a line somewhere or shift one of these lines. I want it to line up and make it look like it's really a surprise. These would be kind of fun too, as like um, a note or something. I think that when we did these with my fifth graders last year, it was around Halloween. So I had a lot of like really cute little pumpkins that turned into scary jack-o'-lanterns. And this one's kind of looking a little scarier than this guy because this one has way more teeth. All right. To do my tongue, all I did was draw like a wiggly little worm line from behind these sharp teeth. So, you know, there. But you could do whatever you want. Those are details that are not super important. Um, really quickly, I'm going to draw some of my circles. I'm going to try and space them out. This is called composition. I'm not going to put all the exact same size circle because I'm not interested in doing that. I don't want it to be a perfect pattern. I'm going to do some big, some small. Some of them I'll clump together. Some of them I'll move far apart. And I like some of them to be kind of falling off the edge of the monster because that's more realistic. If you've got them all like arranged right here, it looks like you only made the polka dots for this drawing. It doesn't look like the monster could be turned to the side and still have spots. So always think of your edges. Same way with um, photography. It's like you're choosing what to include in the frame and also what not to include. So I'm done with my monster, the pencil portion of it. I'm going to move on to my Sharpie. If you wanted to keep this and just practice and keep folding these, all oh, this is computer paper that I'm using right now. But if you wanted to keep doing these until you found one that you really, really liked and wanted to spend the time coloring in, this is all that you really need in order for you to get this effect, okay? But because I want to show you guys about coloring and doing gradients and blending stuff, I'm going to sharpie my stuff in and I'm also going to color at least a portion of this, okay? So to do your sharpie, I always tell my students, you guys here watching me and participating, um, that the Sharpie wants to work for you much more when you're being gentle. That's true with most markers. Um, the more you push, the more you're going to kind of wreck the tip of the marker. And it's going to dry out in spots. And that's when you get markers that you have to kind of turn them in different directions to get any ink to come out. So when you're really gentle with your marker and just touching the tip to the page and letting the paper, which is absorbing the Sharpie ink, when you're letting the paper do its job and the Sharpie do its job and you're not forcing them, it works a lot better. You, shouldn't, you should almost not hear your marker. The sound of your marker going across your paper should be very faint. And right now when we're in art class and kids are using markers, Miss Felt walks around like a hawk. And I'm like, I can hear a Sharpie. I hear a squeak. Sounds like there's a mouse in a mouse trap in here. So at home, I want you to be listening to your marker. He will tell you if you're pressing too hard. I'm going to color in these eyes just because it's a small area. 
The inside of the mouth, we're going to also color with a lot of black, but because it's such a huge area, we're going to use black crayon. And I also blended the inside of the mouth with red. Um, at the end of class today, when you are finished with your work, parents, if you would like to, I would be happy to share and show off all of the work that everyone has done, people participating with me today. The only thing that I ask is that you do not include your child's name or their face because I'll probably have to um, blur that or crop it out when I post it on my Instagram stories and my Facebook stories. But I would definitely like to show off all these monsters. If you send me a boomerang or two pictures next to one another of what they look like, I would love to share all the work that we do. And I plan, I've already got a list started on other projects. And I know I said this before we started, but um, parents, I'm apologizing to you in advance. Probably have a lot less viewers next <laughs> Next time I do this because I'm pretty sure that what we're gonna do is involving vegetable oil I'm trying to keep all of the projects that we have To supplies that you'll probably have in your house. I have a lot of like printmaking materials I have a bunch of stuff here because I'm an art teacher and my home and my work are basically the same thing but I know that not everybody has You know printmaking ink or India ink like I do so I'm going to try to stick to just like markers, watercolors, crayons, pencils, household items. You'd be surprised at the number of art supplies you can create with what you have in your kitchen. If you guys have flour and water, cornstarch, sugar, salt, vinegar, vegetable oil, stuff like that, that's pretty much, oh, and food dye. Food coloring, liquid food coloring is a huge proponent in homemade art supplies because it helps to color things. <clears throat> I'm thinking about showing you guys how to do like homemade finger paint, maybe some like homemade liquid sidewalk chalk eventually because I know that everybody's spending a lot more time outside. Okay, so I am done with my, no, don't do pre-K art next, please. I want to challenge. Okay. Well, what I, have in, what I have in mind, I think will be really fun for all age levels. I love it. So what we're gonna do now, I'm going to start coloring. I know that I Sharpie and I color pretty fast, so not everybody is probably at a point where they're coloring right now, but that's not a huge deal. You can just listen while you work and look up every now and again, like what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to decide on my colors. So, colors. There is a color wheel. There are primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors. But let's split them for today into warm colors and cool colors. So warm colors would be, I'm going to give my students a second to scream it and brag to their parents about how they know. Warm colors would be things like red, this is like a magenta pink, orange, yellow, this kind of orange, this pink, and this other kind of red. Okay, so here are my warm colors. These are all analogous. Analogous means that they're near each other on the color wheel. All of these colors blend very well into each other. And you can kind of make a lot of these colors by using these colors right here. These colors are all pretty analogous. Cool colors are blue, different kind of blue, some kind of, what is this called? Wisteria, very specific type of lighter purple. Um, this purple I pulled out, which is just plain old violet. This kind of uh, turquoise sort of blue-green color, and then these two. Green can start to, I use green back and forth, like I would use a yellowy green next to a yellow and kind of, comp, it would almost lend itself to be like a warm color. But here I'm using green as part of my cool color component. So what I decide to do on every piece of artwork and what I tell my students, because um, a lot of the time I will see students work really hard on the pencil portion or do a really good job sharpen, uh, sh doing their Sharpie. And then when it comes to coloring, it's like kind of a free for all or they're not considerate of what colors they wanna choose. 
And if you're not careful about what you're going to do with your colors, then sometimes you might unintentionally make your artwork look a little too busy or it might, um, the colors might clash in, in a way that you didn't intend for them to. I wanted to do an ombre, kind of like this gradient on my monster's body. I wanted to do his body or her body with cool colors. And then I wanted to do all of the elements like the arms, the horns and the um, polka dots and stuff with warm colors and the lips also with warm colors. So all of my details were warm colors and all, my body was the big chunk of it was cool colors. Okay. I'm going to reverse it here and do warm colors on the body and I'm going to do cool colors and my details just because, but um, you can make a monster with all warm colors. You can make a monster with all cool colors. If you want, it's up to you. You can do rainbow if you'd like. Complementary colors are, a warm and a cool color pretty much that are next to each other and they make each other brighter because they're so opposite when you put them next to each other they both make each other brighter and complement each other and they shine even more when you blend two complementary colors though it doesn't turn out well so I'm gonna show you really quick on Maggie's sketch if I have this magenta -y kind of color and I take this yellowy <coughs> excuse me kind of color and I start very gently kind of going back and forth and blending with them. This is very pretty and it's giving me sort of this like almost orange tint kind of in the middle ground. Okay, they're nice. They, um, they're analogous. They're near enough to each other that they're not going to create like a color that I wasn't intending to have on my art because <coughs> I want my monster to be bright. So the complementary colors, so this is a yellowy orange so if I take this yellowy kind of or brightish blue color and I start coloring on there, next to each other they'd look really pretty. But when I color them on top of each other, it starts to create like a brown, okay? Which is fine if that's what you're going for. And if you want to create your brown monster, you could just use a brown crayon. Or you can challenge yourself to blend. Mm -hmm. But I wanted all of mine to look super bright. So I'm going to start coloring. When I do my colors and I do all of my blending, which I've gotten, um, questions about. <laughs> I'm so happy to have her in art class. Hey, Cadence. All right. <laughs> I'm going to try and do it as often as I can. Yeah. When I start to color, I usually start on the edges where I want my stuff to be darkest because I want to give the illusion that he is round. So I don't want to just leave him flat. And I'm taking my time. I'm coloring with a good bit of pressure right at the edges, and then I'm lifting my hand and my crayon away from the paper as I color. I'm going to go down maybe about that far, because that's when I want to start to blend into some like other pink kind of colors. I'm going to go over here. Color, and I'm going to lift off. Color pencils and paint are going to blend. Uh, you'll probably be able to blend them and make new colors a lot more easily. But it's very possible to do this with crayons, and I think that because they're a little more challenging, it might be a little bit more valuable to practice with something that doesn't yield so easily. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really need to be careful about your pressure. So I colored super lightly with my magenta, and I'm starting in the magenta area with my pink, coloring lightly too. I'm going to color a little bit harder as I come out of that pink area. <coughs> And get myself ready to be able to blend into like I don't know maybe like an orange or something I'm thinking but all here I'm gonna keep it light you can always go darker with your crayons but you can't go lighter once you've got the color down okay so you don't want to accidentally paint a super harsh dark line and then not be able to lift it back up so I say that you approach it from this side, then you go from this side, and you just kind of whittle it down. It takes a little bit of um, going back and forth. It's not all one and done when you're coloring it, but I think that it's worthwhile. So I'll go back in there, and I could maybe even find like a mid-range tone to go near <clears throat> where the pink and the magenta are. So ideally, what you want to happen here, you don't want to really be able to tell where the magenta color ends and the pink really begins. You want it to kind of all be blended. 
So let's say, but I'm going to do a troubleshoot. So let's say that you're coloring and you accidentally color really hard like this and you forgot to blend or whatever. So I would go in and I would color hard with my light color. Go into the magenta as much as you can and then I would go back and very, very gently, very gently, little tiny circles, little lines, whatever you feel comfortable with. Just mush around that line right there. Try very hard to kind of get it to blend. That's like the number one thing I see with blending with um, students is that they color in chunks and they don't know how to make the chunks just flow seamlessly from one to the next. And that's what I get asked about all the time when I color with my kids, which is all the time because it's really hard for me to watch people do art and not participate. <laughs> so I do. Okay, so I'm going to color. I'm going to get my pink over here. I'm going to do pink on this side just to make sure that I'm mostly even. But I am going to do a little hint of magenta here and on the other side just to kind of keep things um, the same as what's going on up there. But I'm going to choose my next color. I'm probably going to do these two oranges and then end with my yellow somewhere down at the bottom. So... I'm going to start by coloring in the magenta and pink that I created. And I'm going to go along my edges with my darker color, lifting my crayon, less pressure. Start on the edge, lifting my crayon, less and less pressure. <clears throat> lifting my crayon, get some water. And then I'm going to use my lighter orange. And I'm going to fill in all those teeny tiny microscopic white areas. Another thing that I see is, uh, I call it coloring fatigue. When you start to get to the midway point in your project and you think that you've colored enough. Saturation, when you're going for color, if you want something to be bright, you really have to commit to coloring it. You don't want to just kind of color like super light like that and then just be like, I'm done. You can't see that even from the camera, can't even pick that up. But here on my paper, it's just not, it's just not finishing the work, you know? Um, because you can do a really good job. I'm going to kind of put hints of orange up here too. I'm going to creep this orange up into this pink area, like I said, just to keep it all in the family. Because this is all warm colors, I don't have to worry about this making some kind of nasty brown. It's all very, very vibrant pinks and oranges. I don't want him to be a realistic brown monster. I want to have rainbow colors today. So um, I'm going to move down now. Let's see, I'll take my darker orange again, color down here just a little bit. But at this point, I'm probably going to start to do some yellow. And as, my way, as I make my way through my warm colors, I would say yellow is um, one of the ones that could kind of blend into warm or cool because it can go along with like a turquoise and then turquoise lends itself so easily to blue and blue is a cool color. So I think that this is, I'm going to use my lighter orange now down here. This lighter orange is now going to act as the darker yellow. Oh my gosh, look what I did. I forgot a circle. <sighs> I tell you guys all the time when we're doing Sharpie that we have to be detectives and make sure we didn't miss any pencil lines. Shame on Miss Felt. Didn't even follow my own advice. All right. So what we're doing, we are going to color harder on the edges and then lighter as we go into the middle or the meat of the monster. Okay, once I think I've got a good area colored, and I don't think it's just going to be boring yellow all underneath his mouth, because one color to me is just not good enough. We need more. Always more colors. Now I'm going to get my yellow and start coloring him in. If you want to get really fancy, I can show you in a second how to make a um, shadow underneath his lip. 
Maybe we'll do that after we color the polka dots. All right, so I'm gonna kind of color all in the yellow, kind of even make some yellow, put it up here. Like I said, because it's all warm colors, it's okay for me to do that. So now I've got his body mostly done and we can't really see where the pink stops and the orange starts and the yellow stops and the orange, you know, we, we, um, we can't tell and that's a good thing. You want it to look blended if that's what you're doing. So now I'm gonna do my spots or my polka dots. I really like this color, this is sea green. I'm gonna do some sea green spots. And I might change them as I go. In fact, I'm just going to stop coloring so hard. When I know that I wanna blend something, I start coloring really, really lightly wherever I know it's going to go to the next color. So I'm not coloring the whole polka dot. I'm just coloring a portion. All right, so after I do the first top half of these polka dots, I'm going to get my other color. What would go well with him? Probably this guy. So I'm gonna use this beautiful blue. I'm gonna blend. This is very subtle. The difference in these two colors extremely subtle but like I said details make the difference stuff like this just it adds interest and the more experienced at art you become the more you consider all these little tiny options like what if I did little rainbows inside of each polka dot you know or a shadow around each polka dot. It's up to you. That's what's so awesome about art is that there aren't rules. You can do whatever you want to do. Okay. For his horns, let's see. What do I want to do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I never gave him arms. Oh well, this one doesn't need arms. And do this darker stuff. Oh, that's a pretty color. I'm gonna do this for his lips too. So I'm gonna do these stripes and leave the other ones white, just like I did in the other. Let's see, start on the second one. And if you accidentally skip the wrong stripe or color the wrong thing. All you need to do is just update your um, pattern. When you are making the most of an accident on your artwork, what do we call that, students? When we accidentally rip our paper or we get like a paint splotch or something happens, what do we call it? We call it beautiful oops. You just make the most out of your situation and turn it into something new. Okay, so I'm coloring just the corners of the mouth because I want those to look darker. And also when he's folded shut, I want the corners to kind of blend with each other and that all be different colors. And then I'm probably gonna do, honestly, let's see what kind of color do I like. This looks so close, no, I don't like that one. Let's do this one. So I'm gonna go back and probably do a little blending in between these. I think I did a decent ombre, but I think it could be better. Okay, so for his tongue, I think that we should stick with this blue thing because I, I really like it. It kind of looks like alien almost. So I'm going to use more of this color because I don't think he got enough attention. I'll put it on the feet too. Okay, I know I'm getting kind of sloppy going outside of my lines. I also, on this previous monster, after I'd colored everything in, I went around, I went around with my Sharpie and made the outside line of his body a little bit thicker. <clears throat> so I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave the tip of his tongue white so that I can start to blend it with this really light blue. And I actually think that I might do a little bit of purple. 
which I've completely ignored until this moment, for his tongue. Okay, let's see. I like that. Okay, so for inside of his mouth, instead of doing red, I'm going to do this purple. So I'm going to start hard because the inside of his mouth, I want it to look like the center of it is kind of glowing and it all fades to black toward the edge. So I'm um, basically this purple is my light color and the black is my dark color. But now that we know how to do this and you're all experts like me, I don't need to explain what I'm doing. I hope everybody is having fun and staying safe and doing their homeschooling. We miss you guys. And by we, I mean me and all of the other teachers at Joe Davies and I'm sure all over the place. Cannot wait to get back in my art classroom. But until then, this is a great substitute. Okay. So I've done the middle with my purple. Now I'm going to go in with my black. It's a dark color. I'm going to be sure not to accidentally smudge black into the teeth. If you do that a little bit, it's no big deal. Because I colored so hard with my purple, though, it's really easy for me to blend this black into it. I'm just pressing pretty hard when I get to it. Look, it's like I forgot to color that whole area. That's okay. Wipe away all that. <clears throat> I've seen a couple of these where it's like a giraffe that looks like a little cow or something, and then you open it up and it's got this long, windy neck. Or like um, a frog that when you open it up, he's like eating a giant fly. There are so many fun ways to customize this project. And I just remember having so much fun last year with my fifth graders. And I was so impressed by their ideas. Okay, so I'm just going to blend this a little bit. And that is about, I'm going to do a little quick check. Make sure that all my colors work when he's closed up. Like that. Oh, look how cute. And then when I open him up, bah! Ah, I love it. Hi, guys. Awesome. I hope that you're having fun. I cannot wait to see what you guys have done as well. Um, I would love to see your monsters if you drew them. If you end up doing anything else, I'd like to see that too. Um, this has been fun. This is a great stress relief. After I draw and I color, I feel so much more relaxed. I feel great right now. And I'm super excited. I'm already planning our next session. Not sure for the time being. We're trying to get a little station set up for me here at my house so that I can do this regularly um, without it being a whole lot of trouble and having to take up a ton of the kitchen space like what I'm doing now. It's all in my kitchen countertop. But I'm finished with my monster. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. If you're still coloring, I am super excited. I can't wait to see yours, Caitlin, and everybody else's. Uh, I'm going to log off in just a second, but I had one more thing that I wanted to show you. I did one more drawing, and this is for all of you, my students, my friends, parents, everybody who needs to keep on hanging in there, okay? This is a message from Miss Bell. Stay happy, stay healthy, or stay healthy, stay happy, and I love you. I love you guys. I miss you guys. All of my students, thank you for joining me today. I'm so proud of you for continuing to practice. Practice makes better. Don't say practice makes perfect because perfect doesn't exist. You can always keep improving. But I'm really proud of you for joining me today. I'm super excited that this seems to have worked. I'm going to go and read through all of these messages now, and I cannot wait to start seeing what you guys have had coming in. Okay, so I'll wave to you like that.
And then next time that I do this, hopefully I'll have a better camera set up and I'll figure out how to do this a little more smoothly. I really hope that you enjoyed this. And um, whatever drawings you're doing, even if it's not this project, I want to see them, okay? So as you finish up, just make sure to send me those pictures. Um, you can send them to my school email if you want. You can message my Facebook if you would like. Um, I'm doing this Facebook Live today. I will possibly be trying to do a YouTube Live video at some point. I know a lot of my students have access to that and you don't need a Facebook account in order to watch that. I do have a Facebook, uh, I mean a YouTube channel. It's called The Right Brain. A lot of my students are subscribed to it. Um, before I get my next video out or do this again, you can go and look at some of my little demos or tutorials. I've got um, time-lapse videos of me doing digital art and fun stuff. Okay, so I'm going to get going. I'm going to be sitting here like this, twiddling my thumbs since my daughter is napping right now, waiting to see your art. I cannot be more excited. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so thankful that I have this wonderful community who is all about being creative and uh, stretching our art muscles. All right, I love you guys. I'll see you soon.